Praise the Lord. What's going on? This is your man Jamel with Men of Renown. Hitting you up this morning, man, with, with, with just a, a real quick word from God from the book of Colossians. And, and let me tell you, I'm going to do this a little bit backwards this morning. I'm going to hit you with kind of the back end. Because to me, it's, it, it's so amazing what the Holy Spirit is giving us here in, in Colossians chapter 3. And, and what I'm going to do is, is then I'm going to backtrack and I'm going to show you how this is possible. Um, let me just jump right into it. Praise God. Um, in the book of Colossians chapter 3 and verse 10, it says, And have put on the new man which is being renewed unto the full knowledge according to the image of him who created him. What it said again was put on the new man, put on the new man. This is something that, that, you know, um, I've been thinking a lot about lately when I'm, when I'm looking at my life, I'm looking at, um, um, you know, uh, the nature of, of Christianity and, and the body of Christ and how, you know, the Holy Spirit said, put on the new man. And, and, and there's so many of us that, um, walk or say we're walking in the faith, but we fail to put on the new man. This isn't something that you do seldom or something that you do every other day. This is something that you live that 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 word put on is, is is similar to to putting on a garment or or putting on a shirt right it, it's to put on it's something that you physically and consciously have to do on a daily basis he said put on the new man and then he said that this new man is being renewed he says which is being renewed unto the full knowledge according to the image of him who created him so it, it is being renewed unto the full knowledge of him who created him because this new man came from the old man. We didn't always uh, uh, claim to be Christian. We didn't always, I speak for myself, I didn't always walk the way I'm striving to walk now. This new man we learn in the book of Ephesians was created from the old man. And so this new man's mind has to be renewed. It has to be changed. It has to be reborn in essence, right? So that it uh, 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 can be formed into the image of, of Christ put on the new man how do you do that and what's that mean and what's that look like and I man I've struggled to try to understand that for so long and and in conversating with other people to help them understand what does it look like to walk in the virtues or in the attitude of the new man because this is what we're called to in Christ this is what we're called to in Christ See, when we put on the new man, we no longer practice the things of the old man. We no longer live the way the old man lived. We're doing new things. We're talking different. We're moving different. We're acting different. We're portraying different things because that old life that we used to live is no longer the predominant life. That life has been crucified with Christ. The Bible says that you have died and you have risen right? If you've risen with Christ, right? He says, now you have this new life. And in this new life, you do new things. Well, what are those new things that you do? What are these new virtues and these new attitudes that one does? Well, in verse 12 of that same chapter, and I'm only going to give you the first three today, the first three, he says, put on therefore, as God's chosen ones. Let me just stop there. Did you know you were one of God's chosen ones? See, you read the Old Testament, you see Israel, the, the, the children of, 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 of Israel being God, being called God's chosen people. But in this dispensation, in this age that we're in now, the age of grace, the church, the body of Christ is in fact the chosen ones of God. There's another word that some translations use there and it's called some, 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 some type of um, friction within the body of Christ today. But that word is the elect of God. And the fact of the matter is there are those who are of the elect of God. And when we argue over words that God has used, then, 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 then that, that doesn't lessen the word of God. 
that, that in fact lessens us. So we need to take God's word for what God's word is. When he says that we are the chosen or the elect of God, then it is what it is. But you should know that as the body of Christ, you are the chosen ones, the church today. And he says that you are beloved, beloved. In the book of Romans, he says that he commended his love towards you, that while you were yet sinners, he sent his son to die for you. So never question the love of God and the fact that you are his chosen and his elect. But he says to put on, therefore, because you are the new man, because you are walking in the, in, in, in the essence and in the spirit of the new man, he says, well, go ahead and clothe yourself in these things, right? I love that imagery because... We do it every day. Every day you wake up, you've got to make a decision to put your shirt on, your undershirt, your pants, your socks. You make a decision to put these things on, right? And what you put on is a reflection of yourself as you go out into the world, right? Well, he's saying, well, you're walking in the spirit of the new man. Go ahead and put these things on, therefore, because these things are going to be a reflection of the new man. These things are going to be a reflection of me because I'm the new man in you, right? So he says, put on, therefore, as God's chosen and beloved, inward parts of compassion. Let's start there. The first three things that we're going to go over today, right, have all to do with our relationship to man. They have all to do with how we relate to each other, right? Human relationship. So that's very important in the economy of God is how, listen, we talk to each other. We love each other. We, 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 we. Uh, greet each other. We have relationships and how we do life with each other. It's all very important to God. And the very first aspect or attitude or virtue of the new man is compassion. And see, when he's talking about compassion, what he's talking about is that tender touch, right? It's, it, 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 it's the feeling uh, uh, um, of another's misery or pain. Um, and this feeling should affect us. Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, he said, blessed are those who mourn. Right. In order to mourn, you have to have compassion for what somebody else is going through. And in the new man, we actually can look at somebody else's life, their sin sickness, and we can have compassion for them. and We can mourn for them because we understand what that is, because we were under the power of sin ourselves until we were freed by the blood of Christ. So we can have compassion for our fellow man. And that's a, a virtue. That's an attitude of the new man. We don't judge others. Jesus said he came as the physician to heal the ill in Matthew chapter 9. He, he, he revealed himself as the physician to the, to the Pharisees when he was at Matthew's house with the tax collectors and the other sinners. And he revealed himself as this physician that had compassion on the people because he understood their sin sickness. And that's what we're called to do as the new man. That's one of the characteristics or aspects or attitudes of the new man. The next thing he said was, kindness and this kindness i've been i've been just sitting here racking my mind on this and i'm going to continue even after this video because in the greek is christos and it was defined as a virtue of the new man whose neighbor's good was dear to him was as dear to him as his own so what 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 it's saying there is this kindness was in effect saying that my neighbor's good his welfare his, his life was as important to me as my own. Paul said the same thing about the marriage relationship. He said husbands are to love their wives as their own flesh. This kindness is more than a goodness. There's a lot of good people out there, right? But there's not this type of kindness. There's a story that, that Jesus told when he was at Simon the Pharisee's house. And this, there's this woman, this sinner came to him and she washed his feet with her tears and dried it with her hair and she anointed it. And, you know, Simon, the Pharisee was like, well, what's he doing? Doesn't, do, do, doesn't this man who's supposed to be a prophet know that this woman is a sinner? Why, 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 why is he letting this happen? And Jesus had to check him on that. And, you know, I imagine Simon, the Pharisee was a good man, right? He had Jesus at his house. He was trying to learn. I imagine he was a good man, but Jesus was more than a good man. Jesus was a kind man. He was a kind man, and that's what God is calling us in the new man to be. He's calling us to get past just being good, but he's calling us to be kind. He's calling us to be kind. Goodness by itself is not enough. 
It's not enough. You've got to be kind. And then the third thing that I want to share with you today is he said to be humble or lowliness. He said, put on humility. Now there's two ways that you do this, right? There's a divine side. Let me explain that to you real quick. On the divine side, what that means is we see God as the creator and man as the creation and in the presence of the almighty and all that we see and can understand and we can read in the in the constitution and the word of God we're humbled by how great this amazing God is so there's that divine side we look at God and we humble ourselves in his presence but then there's that human side remember the first three really have to do with humanity and relationship and how we deal with each other but there's that human side because we are all God's creation and no one's better than the other, right? You're not better than me. I'm not better than you. I don't care who you are. Jesus said the first shall be last and the last shall be first. There's no pecking order, right? We, you know, we all have equality in God. He's not showing, you know, you know, we all have that equality. And because of this, because of this, we should live a life of humility, right? We should live a life of humility, how we interact with each other. We should be humble with each other because I'm not better than you and you're not better than me. Put on the new man. When you put on the new man, it affects the way you live. It's your outer garment. Jesus said in the book of Revelations, he says that the bride has made herself ready, that she's cleaned her garments, right? Put on the new man, compassion, kindness, humility. These are all your garments and they need to be clean in the presence of God. Put on the new man. This is your man, Jamel, with Men of Renown. Y'all be blessed today.